Hello, everybody. I'm Itzaga Miel, and we are here with the Switch Weekly Series, Switch It On, where we share ideas, insight, and inspiration, helping you as a professional to switch relationship to revenue, referrals, and reputation, and stand out. And you're invited. If you watch me right now, you're invited. We are live, and you can definitely put your name in the chat, in the comments. Let me know who you are. You're joining me. I could see you joining me, but I would love everybody else to see as well. That's one of the way to personal brand yourself, if you know or not. Now, to remind you all already from the beginning, every strategy or every solution I'm going to share with you today, also in this episode, uh, we can help you get much more out of it by advising your firm, mentor you or your colleagues, and even execute it for you with our done-for-you services. So never be shy, okay? Ask your questions, get connected. Let me add value to your practice, to your organization and to your career, okay? So I hope that's already from the beginning, so don't wait till the end. Today we're going to talk about finding the time for relationship building, and specifically about how to find the time in your busy schedule to do such an important task. Again, I would recommend you put your name in the chat, let me know where you are, and thank you very much for all of you joining from all over the world. I already see over, almost more than 20 countries joining us, so thank you very much for that, and again, Put your name in the chat, let me know you're here with me. It's never bad to say hello. Now, we all know every professional needs strong business relationships to be successful, right? Now, these relationships include any interaction you have and any connection you build with clients, with your colleagues, with peers, and other stakeholders in the firm or in the industry. Now, these connections are some of your most valuable assets in both the short and long term. So I think it's well worth nurturing and strengthening this relationship, right? It's, it goes without saying. Now, building relationship for the long term takes time. It takes time to know, like, and trust people. And there is no shortcut. There's a acceleration process, but there's no shortcut. But on the other hand, whenever I train firm, and it happened again recently, about how to build relationship for the long term, or even if I'm mentoring individual lawyers in a mentoring uh, program, I'm asked the same question over and over again. And they're saying to me something like, it's like I understand the significance of building relationship, but how do I make time for building relationship? I'm so busy, I don't know how I could possibly add more things to my schedule. So I want to dedicate this session to answer this important question. Because I have no doubt that the key word for this session, already from now, from the beginning, is consistency. Consistency is the key to building trust, be that in your professional, even your personal relationship. This trust, in turn, will lead to the long-term stability, which characterized by both parties feeling, you know, maybe valued or supported, even secure and willing to work together. But every human being, like all of us, find it difficult to be naturally consistent, right? See, with so many distractions in our daily life, we tend to gravitate toward intensity. Because we need to allowing us to, something, to do something really at once and, and be done with it. Now, it happened to all of us, I know. Remember the time, the last resolution you made, you want to lose weight, or you want to go to the gym, or any commitment you made with yourself. You probably remember that. Now, if I ask you, how many of you met your goals to your complete satisfaction? I bet the answer is only very few of us. Now, when I was a young lawyer, a friend of my parents taught me a, a very important lesson. He said the following, it's like, it's like you know, everywhere in the world is gold, he said. It just doesn't matter how long and how deep you're going to dig. You know, some people digging here all don't find gold. Go there, digging hole, don't find gold. Go there, don't find gold. And all the life digging small little holes and never ever find gold. But some people digging gold and after maybe five centimeters finding gold. And wow, he said they are lucky. Maybe it happened to be in the right time in the right place. But some people digging and digging and digging and digging. At the end, they're going to find gold. And what everybody said, oh, wow, what a lucky people. They forgot they already working and consistently so long, 20 years, they're working to find the goal. Best-selling author and, and motivation speaker and a friend of mine, Simon Sinek, says 
There is no single act or event that can make people trust you. It's rather the accumulation of the more than little things that you do every single day. Or in other words, you do it consistently that make others begin to trust you. And that lead them to enjoy working or, or being with you. And by the way, the opposite is also true, right? When you are perceived as being inconsistent or found out not to follow through on your promises, others will think you don't care. And even if it does not, it isn't true. So you see, consistency is a very key word at the beginning of our discussion today. And I dare to even go further than that and say that, and that people will say that they see you as being unreliable or worse, untrustworthy, and they may feel unrecognized inadvocate, confused, vulnerable, sad, even angry if you don't keep your promises. And this really can fracture your connection or really erode the business relationship and over time threaten the future of this relationship and even influence the growth of your practice in your career. Now, question we should all ask, why is that? Because like any other commitment, building relationship is not Again, it's not one time of event. And I hope you get it. Because it requires discipline and short-term sacrifice. Really, you have to make the long-term commitment for building relationship. And many of you need to make a switch in the way to build business relationship. And not just by going to network even once a year or whatever. You think about that. That's not the way, of course, to build relationship. This is just the seed in the ground. There's much more to it. And this type of switch of change really requiring doing small things every day consistently, right? And this commitment requires time. Requires time investment. And now, right, your question is in place. Hello, it's I I don't have time. So let me share with you six practical strategies. And that's exactly the same strategies that I use to help law firms and other professionals firm to really implement these strategies in their practice and a daily routine. And that's how I know how effective they are also in my own life and many other people's life. And, and let's start with the first strategy, okay? So I hope you are, you are with me and you are there. And the first strategy is, and let me share it with all of you, is, sorry for that. I think you just lost me. So here I am. I'm back. And I hope you hear me. So the first tragedy is um, switch your mindset. Again, let me share with all of you. Switch your mindset is the first tragedy for gaining the time. Let me explain. Uh, before I go deeper again, I want to thank you all of you to join me. And again, those of you joining me, want to put your name in the chat. You're very welcome. Everybody can see. I'm speaking about finding the time for relationship building. And if you have any question during my session, again, you can always put it in the comment. I'll be happy to answer it also during this session. So again, the first strategy is switch your mindset. To begin your journey towards really building stronger client relationship or any other relationship you're building, it's crucial to focus on shaping your mindset and your attitude. Because mindset is everything. The way you think about things can really shape your belief your actions, and your relationships. Because your thoughts dictate what your life look like. And they are also instrumental, if you don't know, you should know, in building a successful business relationship. It's the same like, by the way, working on your health. It's not so much lack of knowledge, because the basic of healthy living are pretty well known to a lot of us. You see, it is the fact that lack of will and commitment that's what lacking. That is the reason why many people fail to keep their commitment. So you need to make permanent changes in the way you live and the way your mindset is there. And I ask you to make this commitment to change your mindset by elevating it almost to the quality of your own 
or business relationship to the same level, by the way, of your professional mastery. Only when you put your mindset that the building business relationship as equal to your professional mastery, to know very much the law, whatever they can do, whatever you are, or the tax, that's the only time when it starts getting the place in your schedule. And yes, it is a conscious decision you and nobody else can do. So I suggest you do it starting from now. Set your mindset. Okay? Thank you very much, Rajesh and David, Anna, Mario, Dalvi, Marcani, Doferi, Bruno, Alexia. Thank you very much for all of you very much. Again, speaking about finding the time, relationship, building relationship. And I'm coming with a second strategy. And second strategy is prioritize and focus. Prioritize and focus. How is this strategy helping us in finding the time building relationship? You need to make an intentional decision to focus on handful of relationships. Because you need to select and prioritize them. Now, here's a sentence I like to repeat to my mentees, to all the lawyers and accountants, all of them I mentor. I would say, the fewer people you're focusing on, the more time you can focus on these people. Again, let me say it again. The fewer people you're focusing on, the more time you can focus on those people. You see, your time is limited. And we want to use it correctly so you can get the results you're looking for. So I hope you agree that not every person you know or every name you have in your contact database deserve your valuable time. In my experience as advising many law firms and professional firms, I found that it's really beneficial to organize, or I should say prioritize, not organize, my network of connection into three distant groups, which I also recommend to any of you to do the same thing or any other professional. Allow me to explain this approach really using maybe different terminology. And the first circle, the inner circle, I call them the key inner circle. And this is really a group of consists of about 15 20 people, that's it, 20, 20 people, most critical professional relationship in your network. These are the individuals that really hold significance, importance, and have really direct impact on your professional growth. Again, I'm ignoring the second personal relationship, talk about professional relationship, and the people really direct impact on your professional growth. Now, it's essential to prioritize regular interaction with these people. You know, aiming maybe to meet them face to face at least once or twice a year, but really maintaining frequent communication with them. See, your key in the circle, this inner circle, should compromise key clients, maybe trusted colleagues, maybe mentors, influential people, other individuals who have a profound influence on your career or growth of your practice trajectory. Then we go to the second circle, second group of people. I call them the expanded circle. It's a bit the larger circle. This is the next group that really conclude all these next people, hundreds of contacts in your network. But you may not currently engage in business transaction with them, but these are individuals you know and really want to maintain a connection with. These are the connections that hold potential really for future collaboration, partnership, or even business opportunities and referrals. So it's important to periodically reach out to this group, keeping the relationship alive and nurturing the possibility of future collaboration. And the last, the third group, the inner, the outer circle, I call it the wide circle. This is the final group that really compromise all other contacts, including your social media connection. Now, this connection really could be hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people, or even millions of people if you happen to be a very known person. Now, engaging with such a large network individually can really be challenging. So a value-driven approach here is a very much a key. And that's what I teach, you know. Sharing really informative and insightful content through really your blog, your LinkedIn, any other relevant channels can help you reach and engage with this broader network, with the, out, with the wide circle, very much effectively. And this is exactly the way to prioritize and focus your connection so you save time building relationship with the right and relevant connection. So you don't have to spend all the time you do not have and all you do it on the 1520, the really the inner, the key inner circle. 
And before I continue again, I want to say hello to those who are joining me. Thank you very much for that. We're speaking about finding the time for relationship building. That's the title of today. And, and I hope you want to, to learn more about how to do that. And again, thank you for joining. If you have any questions, put it in the comments under, and I'll be happy to look and answer. So we are in the strategy number three. Strategy number three, in order to gain the time that you're looking for, is schedule relationship building time. Schedule relationship building time. Let me explain. We all know this expression, what gets scheduled, get done. This is where the rubber really meets the road. You know, you literally have to block out time on your calendar and your agenda to focus on building relationship because it will not happen otherwise. And I literally set this up as really an appointment with myself. So if anybody else look at my calendar, to, they see that I am busy. And I am busy, of course, building relationship because I set aside time to work and invest in building relationship. So the question you have to ask yourself, when will you set aside in your agenda time to begin or time to really to restart or maybe even to finish? Put it like an appointment in your agenda with yourself and nobody else can move it. And by the way, there are some applications that if you put it, if you use them, nobody really can delete it from your agenda, even not yourself and not your secretary, nobody else, which means you will commit to it. And, and this time, by the way, could be at 10 minutes in the morning or maybe two hours in your weekend. It can be a really long commitment or something small that you do every single day, for example. Maybe you want to send an email to a connection every day. Or maybe you want to call one person a day. Or maybe share an article. Or maybe write a post online. Or making a lunch appointment. Whatever it is. Each one of those things would help you out to schedule relationship building time, which is tragedy number three. Ready for the next? Okay. So strategy number four is create small rituals. It's connected somewhat to strategy number three, but let me explain that as well and how does that save a lot of time. Create small rituals. So I might say with absolute clarity, consistent rituals and habits really have changed my own life and the health of my professional network of connections. When I start doing it, this is one of the things that really change everything. And as I said, you only need small rituals. So, for example, sending a thank you card to people who have helped you. And by the way, I'm doing it every single Friday for five people for the last 15 years. Or have one call a week with an important connection. Or write a short summary of every client meeting uh, that you had and then send the participant the next day the summary. See, in fact, check in your own life and practice. And I'm, I'm not talking to each one of you. Yes, there. Because the working relationship that keeps client coming back repeatedly are all built, if you check your own practice, are all built on small, shared rituals. You're doing it, but probably not intentionally. So if you start doing it more intentionally, you're going to get more results intentionally. You see, that probably you're doing it. You're sending once in a while an email. You're calling one people here and there, but you don't do it intentionally. That's why you do not know how to predict the results you want. You want predictability? You want to see that it works? Do it intentionally and create those small rituals in your practice. Again, your question in the comments below, and I'll be happy to enter. And of course, you're welcome to share who you are, because I see people also joining us right now. So please put your name in the chat. Let us know who you are, so I can help you out, and everybody will see you are with us. Next strategy, you ready for that? Number five, right? So number five is ask for help. I can ask for help to help you get this time that you want to build relationship. So let me explain here. Two. Optimize your ability to connect with key individuals and effectively manage your relationship. I want you to consider leveraging the capabilities of your personal assistant or maybe a secretary. Yes, you heard me right. You see, part of the process of building authentic relationship can be delegated. Absolutely. So instead of viewing your personal assistant or your secretary solely as a support personnel, why don't you empower them to take on a role of relationship marketing manager? If you, if you give them the title, by the way, they're going to feel amazing good and you will stick with you, but you give them another responsibility because that will shift a perspective that really can greatly enhance your reach 
and your impact. So think about it. How can you use and delegate part of that work to people? And I know a lot of people I mentor, a lot of boys doing it and doing it successfully. And we had a session together with the partner and the assistant. And I explained what to do. And they're just doing an enormously great job. Okay. Next strategy that I want to share with you is number six is use authentic approach. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what are you talking about? It's like, how can authentic approach can save me time or get me the time that I need to build relationship? So when it comes to building relationship, it's crucial to stay true to your unique character, your personality, your style. And I want you to embrace really an authentic approach that really aligns with who you are as well as individuals. Because the more you do it, the easier it will get and the less it feels like it takes a lot of your time. Like you do everything else in your life and you have time to do them because you do that of authenticity. Nobody obliged you to do it. So you have the time to question if you dedicate in the right way by being authentic. See my suggestion here. Number one, embrace your introversion. So if you identify yourself as more introverted in your character, so there is no need to force yourself into uncomfortable situations. Instead, focus on really cultivating maybe one-on-one -on -one interaction, face-to-face -face meeting, and allow yourself to truly connect and engage on a deeper level with your connection. Maybe arrange coffee meeting, lunches, or or even a virtual conversation where you could have meaningful discussion without this pressure of a large social gathering or that you get in conferences, other networking events. Here's another advice. If you want to keep your authenticity, number two, seek warm introductions. See, if cold calls aren't your cup of tea, I understand that. Don't feel obliged to use them as your primary outreach method to find and build connections. Instead, Prioritize warm introduction. You already know so many people. Of course, whenever possible. I want you to leverage your existing network, your existing connection to facilitate introduction and ask for referrals from trusted individuals. Because building relationship through mutual connection really establish a foundation of trust and enhance, and I, th I think it's not surprised to any of you, enhance the chances of successful interaction. Number three, to keep your, your authenticity, your authentic approach, find common ground. See, it's perfectly fine if, you, if you're not into sports, for example, or you're not a sport enthusiast. So rather than relying solely on sport-related conversation or whatever, explore other dimensions to relate to your connection, to find what I call the uncommon commonalities. Discover the shared interests, maybe as family or maybe hobbies or or personal experiences. By tapping into these areas, you really can forge connections and foster meaningful relationships based on genuine connection, not fake connection. And trust me, there's enough good people you want to build those relationships with. Because remember, building relationships should be an authentic and an enjoyable process that resonates with who you are. It's about finding comfort in your own approach while connecting with others on a deeper level. So get your question now in the chat because I'm almost there I'm finalizing my strategies and I want your question. If you don't have the question, I will share and I end. But if you have a question, put it right now in the chat and I'll be happy to enter. And if you're just joining me out, we are live here and I'm happy you joined. Thank you very much for that. So let's go back to where we started today. The question how do I make time for building relationship, right? I'm so busy. I don't know how I could possibly add more thing in my schedule. That's having your mind. Hope, I hope. You didn't expect me to give you more time, right? I could not give you more time if possible. Time is always limited. And we need to prioritize building relationship to be one of the tasks on top of your list. I always like to tease people who said to me, I don't have time. I said, wait a second. If somebody died in your family right now, would you go to the funeral? And always the answer is yes, absolutely. Which means you have time. You know, if somebody tells you, I'm busy, call me next week, it's not that they don't have time. It's just which number in the priority list they put you. So I'm asking you, which number in your priority list you put building relationship? If building relationship is one of the most important thing in your practice to get, to grow, why don't you put it up there? 
And as you notice, know, building business relationship takes time for several reasons. And I want you to understand why it takes time. Number one, trust development. Trust is very fundamental aspect of any successful business relationship. And trust is not built overnight, but mostly for most people is developed gradually over time through consistent interactions, reliability, and delivering on your promises. Now, second reason why it takes time to build relationship because of understanding and alignment. Business relationship involves two or more parties with their own unique goals with your own unique perspective and needs. It takes time to understand each other's objective and really align the interest and find common ground, right? Reason number three why it takes time to build a relationship because nurturing connections. Strong relationships are built on the foundation of regular, meaningful interaction. Regular, meaningful interaction. And this is really requires investing time and efforts in staying connected, whether it is through meetings, calls, email, I don't care, or any other forms of communication. Here's another reason why it takes time, overcoming challenges. Building business relationships involve navigating through challenges and conflict that may arise. And it takes time to solve issues, find common solutions, and really develop a deeper understanding of each other's strengths and limitations. Once another reason why it takes time to build relationship and you need to invest it, because building credibility and reputation. Establish a positive reputation. You know, when I teach personal branding, that's what I'm telling people. But establishing a positive reputation and credibility with your industry or fields takes time. And the last one, long-term value creation. Building lasting business relationship involves focusing on the long-term value creation rather than the short-term gains. It takes time to demonstrate the value you can bring to the table. Understand the unique needs with your clients or your partners and really develop a tailored solutions. Ultimately, all those things, building business relationship is a gradual process that requires patience, consistent effort, and really genuine commitment to mutual growth and success of your practice or your career. It is through investing the time in those things and the energy that you could forge strong and enduring connections that really yields fruitful outcome and growth to your practice. But remember, you have to do it consistently. As Harvey Mackay once said, if you are persistent, you will get it. But if you are consistent, you will keep it. So if there's not a question, my friends, it's time to take action. To implement what you're learning in this session, I trust you got some interesting insight on how to find the time to relationship building, why it takes time and why you should put time. If you need our help in implementing it in your practice, so if you just want to learn how to build your authority in your field and build better relationship with your clients, this is exactly what we do for our clients, professionals like you and me around the world, we train them, we mentor them, and even doing the work for them. And by the way, I have two more places in my mentoring program that's starting very soon. So if you're interested, just drop me an email, send me and let me know. And we would love to implement the strategies I'm teaching in your practice. So send me an email or private message to me to see how can I help. Next week, we have another amazing top expert to discuss a new practical strategy to grow your practice and build better relationship reputation and referrals. And I hope you're going to join us as well next week. Um, if you want to make sure you never miss one of our weekly Switch on Interview series, follow me on LinkedIn or go to the Switch Hub website. You can sign up and get the business development strategies and tips. And you can check and register to one of my own new online courses that are coming and live workshop and there are more coming in. Or join the Switch community, membership community. If you do not know about it, go there. Find it out by the switch up though the switch i'm going to share with you right now the link so you could find more information directly without the need to uh, to call me etc so here's the information you can go to hub.theswitch.ch and when you do that you'll find more information also about the courses the training and the community we have over 75,000 uh, professionals around the world and you're very welcome again to send me a pm 
or email to ask any question or see how can I be a value to you and your practice. I'm just looking to see if there's any question coming in. Uh, no question right now. So for now, I want to thank each one of you. I see you. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you being with me till now. I want to thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for that. See everyone next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central European time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And remember, switch on and make time to build relationship authentically and consistently. Bye for now, everybody, and see you very soon.